We have a community today where outwardly we're Muslim, but inwardly when we're with our wives are we Muslim? When we're with our parents are we Muslim? When we're alone and we've got the TV screen and the internet and the curtains are closed, are we Muslim? When the Fajr prayer and the uh, when the Fajr prayer in the morning and the Lamqa goes on, are we Muslim? With our with our with, with the way we deal with people, are we Muslim? Are we Muslims? The way do we cheat, do we lie, do we backbite, are we not meaning? You know, this is the these are the things of the Quran that we claim we believe. But I want you to ask the question tonight. And I want myself to ask that question. I want you to ask it with me. Do we really believe? Apology. I was actually cycling, and uh, so I'm, I'm in my cycling clothes actually. And uh, I, I grabbed an old, um, an old blazer at work, and I put that on so I don't look like I'm a security guard. And uh, brother, brother Osman said, "Look, uh, Mam Siraj is uh, of course you can't make it, can you?" I said, "I'm not a very good standing for Mam Siraj," but he said, "No, please," because uh, so I, you know, my, my apologies for the uh, for the attire, um, for my uh, cycling attire. Um, I, I saw that I, I've heard what Brother John uh, has been saying, and Jazakallah uh, to him. I also saw the poster, um, Superheroes, and a few things come to my mind. Um, and, and of course, the, the title of the talk is Forbidding Evil, Commanding the Good and Forbidding Evil. Um, what I wanted to kind of just say to you firstly is um, I wanted to uh, remind you of these verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, one of the very last chapters of the Quran وَالْعَصْرِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّوْرِ So these are verses that we all know. This is one of the shortest surahs of the Quran, one of the shortest chapters of the Quran. And it's a very, very deep chapter of the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and He swears by time, He takes an oath by time, He says, by time, indeed all of us, we're in loss. You, I'm in loss, you're in loss, everybody we know are, is in loss, in a state of loss, we're losing out. Except people who have four conditions, four qualities. And I wanted to just delve in slightly into each quality. And the first one is Illa Amanu. And the reason I'm picking this, these verses is because I think it relates a lot to the title, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Because later on, the surah says, Watawasu bil haq. And those people who command or who exalt one another, who advise one another, who talk to one another about what is true, about what is right. So I'm gonna come on to that. But before that, this first quality, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. And you know, brothers and sisters, today, we, one of our big problems is that we claim we believe. But I want you to ask the question tonight, and I want myself to ask that question, I want you to ask it with me, do we really believe? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. Look at the story. Let me let me bring Ibrahim alayhi salam into the story. Ibrahim alayhi salam is a young child. He's a he's a young man. And he says to his people, "This is my God. The stars are my God." And then he says, "No." And then he says, "The moon is my God." And he says, "No." And then he says, "The sun is my God." And then when the sun sets, he says an amazing word. He says. Indeed, I do not love those things which set. I don't love things which set. Now if you really think about it, and this was this was Iman from Ibrahim. Ibrahim, imagine the Prophet is commanded to follow Ibrahim. The Prophet is commanded to follow. 
follow his 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 milah, his his way. Hanifa. Ibrahim says, I don't love anything with sense. What he's saying is basically, I only love God. Why? Because everything has sense. And it's as if Ibrahim walks on this earth and he sees everything decaying. He sees everything setting. He sees people's lives setting. He sees them passing away. He sees these beautiful, green, luscious uh, plants and trees and he sees these things decaying. So this was really the start of Ibrahim's journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he basically renounced everything else. And this is the meaning of Hanifa. The meaning of Hanif in the Arabic language means to turn away. To turn away from everything else. So let us ask this question. In our hearts, is it, do we find other things apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes or no? Our, our, are our hearts pulled, attracted, to many many other things is it divided are our hearts divided between many many things apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes or no so this really you know this this um, those who believe so this is really really important that we become people just imagine there are companions around around the Prophet and the Quran says to them don't say you believed the Bedouins and these were people who became Muslim that we have believed, companions, they've seen the Prophet, they've accepted his message. They said that we believed. And the Quran says, don't say that you believed. But say that you merely accepted, you merely submitted. You haven't reached Iman yet. So this, this is really one thing that we've all got. Iman comes when you really think, when you use Iman like Ibrahim, and you become a Muslim out of choice, you become a believer out of choice, not because you've been born as a believer. Today, our religion has become a religion of identity. It's become a religion of the cloth. It's become a religion of affiliation. It's become a religion of, of, of belonging. That's, it's, a, it's, it's become a culture, not an Iman. The Quran doesn't talk about culture. The Quran doesn't talk about identity. It doesn't talk about belonging. It talks about Iman. It talks about Iman, where you are able and you're ready to become like Ibrahim and then his father says if you don't stop what, I'm, what you're going to do what you're doing then I'm going to stone you and then he says Inni muhajirun ila rabbi sahdin. I'm leaving I'm leaving everything so this really is this iman we don't have time to go into it this, this really is the first quality and I want to say this because before we come on to commanding the good and forbidding the evil and you get this from the order of the verse of Surah Al-Asr anyway before we even talk about forbidding the evil then we need to forbid the evil in our hearts. We need to forbid the evil within ourselves. And this is why the scholars say that before the hijrah, the physical hijrah, many, many of us talk about, I want to make hijrah to Saudi, I want to make hijrah to this place because I want to hear the adhan. This is what people mostly say. Is that an internal hijrah or not? And this is what the Prophet exactly said. He said, the muhajir, the migrant, or the emigrant, or the one who makes immigration or emigration, is the one who does this internal emigration. This is what iman is. So this is very, very important. When we talk about commanding the good and forbidding the evil, we have to command the good and forbid the evil in ourselves. That's very, very important. And the next thing then, after we have real iman, not an iman of birth, not an iman of Pakistan, not an iman of Bangladesh, or an iman of, uh, of Sudan, or an iman of Egypt, an iman of the Qur'an, an Iman of the Qur'an, where we take what the Qur'an says and we don't bring our, our, our preconceived ideas. We bring, we, we, we were taught to be, um, you know, we go to a certain mosque and we bring that understanding. So we're coloring the Qur'an already. We're from, you know, we have today, we have the problem today, one of the problems today is that we have groups. And you know why we have groups? It's because we don't submit to the Qur'an. So we submit to ways of understanding Islam that other people have told us. So we come to Allah through people. It's a bit like Christianity. We have intermediaries. We don't go to the Quran. The Quran says, come to me directly. Allah says, come to me directly. But we go through Allah through madaris, through, through certain ways of, um, through akabir, through, 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 I'm not saying we don't need scholars. We need scholars, right? But for guidance, for guidance, you need the Quran. The Quran doesn't say, go, you know, if you don't know, then ask the scholars. 
But for guidance, you need the Quran, you need taqwa, you need piety. This is very, very important because today, in the past, we never had Salafis and Sufis and Ikhwanis and Diobandis and Tablis. We never had this. We never had this. We had everybody was, 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 was because everybody used to take from the Quran. And I want to say this is part of our Iman, where we forego, where we give up and we migrate from other, other things, people understand this sound, and we come to the Quran and we submit and we go to the Quran as the Prophet was. The Prophet was Ummi. He was unlettered. He was illiterate. We need to go to the Quran illiterate people. Not bringing in our philosophies, our theologies, our madhahib, our ways of thinking. We need to put that aside. And if the Quran corroborates, then fine. Not to find in the Quran what we want to prove. So this is really, really, really important. amanu. When we start to come to the Quran, then we become people who have Iman in our lives. We need, we need Iman in our lives. Today, you look at the Muslim community. You know, if you go to the... You know, I've been asked to give khutbahs in the prisons. And if you speak to people who, who work in prisons, 15 to 20 percent of our Muslim community, of the prison community, is Muslim. Can you imagine that? We're 2 to 3 percent of the community in this country, and 15 to 20 percent. Most people don't, you know, one of the things we see, and we all get happy when people come to Islam, when, when converts come to Islam. Don't we? We all say, Allah Akbar Takbir, and we go and hug them in the mosques. I want to ask a question where are they in the mosques? Where are the converts in the mosques? Do we see the converts in the Fajr prayer? You know, you, you attend the mosque, do we see them? Why? Because there is also something that is happening that is very, very serious. Many of these converts are leaving Islam. They are leaving, why? Because we don't believe. You know, once, somebody recently told me, he's a cricketer and he captained Manchester. And he said, um, uh, in, in Zimam al-Haq, you know, and a few of the Pakistani players who became practicing, they called one of some of the uh, Australian players to the house. And they were doing dawah. They were calling them to Islam. And these Australian players said, you know, what a beautiful religion. What an amazing religion you're talking about. And so, and then in the Imam al-Haq and the rest of them, they walked them back to the hotel. So they walked them back to the hotel. And the Australian, one of the Australian players says, you know, you've got to you've told us about your religion, but where are the followers? This was in Pakistan. Where are the followers? I can't see them. The people that you've talked about, I can't see. And this is the problem. We have a community today where outwardly we're Muslim, but inwardly when we're with our wives are we Muslim? When we're with our parents are we Muslim? When we're alone and we've got the TV screen and the internet and the curtains are closed, are we Muslim? When the Fajr prayer, and the, uh, when the Fajr prayer in the morning and the alarm clock goes on, are we Muslim? With, our, with, our, with, with the way we deal with people, are we Muslim? Are we Mu'mins? The way, do we cheat? Do we lie? Do we backbite? Are we Mu'mini? You know, this is the, these are the things of the Qur'an. The Qur'an doesn't talk about the Islam, uh, uh, the belief in Islam, Ikhwan. It doesn't do that. It doesn't talk about Islamic State. The Qur'an doesn't do that. The Qur'an talks about piety. And that piety comes from within. So it's very, very important. So Iman. And then I want to very quickly, because we don't have time, I'll finish in a few minutes, because I know you need to go. To the, to the next talk, Al Amal al Salih. This is the second thing mentioned in the in Surah Al Asr. So, ju just you know, just remember what I said about the. I wanted to say these converts, I, I, for, I forgot to finish my point. These converts, what, are, what is happening is that they're coming to, into contact with us and, this, and they're getting put off. And many of them are leaving Islam as well. And because many of them are not supported, we, for, we say we do a hug in a mosque and then that's it, finish, no more contact. They're alone, they're, 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 they're ostracized by their families. And we have nothing to do with them because we have lost belief. We have an Islam of culture, of culture, we don't have an Islam of the Quran. So these are conditions for commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Islam, now this is Islam. Al Amal al when the Quran keeps on talking about righteous deeds, it means Islam. And again, Islam of the Quran, not our Islam, not. Uh, my name is uh, Abdullah, so I'm a Muslim. My name is Aisha, so I'm a Muslim. This is not the Quran. Of, this is not the Islam of the Quran. The Islam of the Quran is different. The Islam of the Quran is like Ibrahim again. We see it from Ibrahim again. We see that he was commanded. You know, people, the people of the earth, they were settling their families on the banks of the Nile and the Euphrates. Ibrahim is asked to settle his family in a dry, arid, barren desert. Nobody there. Nothing. And he leaves his, 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 his wife and his baby child in the desert and he walks away. Why? Because Allah said so. And he, he's asked to, to, to sacrifice Ismail. 
can imagine, just imagine a young child. You know, if some, if some of you have children, imagine young, or, or young, young um, brothers and sisters. Imagine, and imagine taking the knife and the soft skin, you place it on and you actually start to move it. Imagine that. Imagine what that must be to feel like. And, but he does it because I love they now will be in Ali. We replaced it with a great sacrifice. This is the Islam we need. Islam is basically, if I'm going to sum up, sum up Islam in one or two sentences, it's this. It is whenever you are faced with a choice in your life or two choices in your life, and we're faced with many in our daily lives, you stop and you think for a second and you ask yourself, what does my Lord want from me? And then you ask Allah, you call to him, Oh Allah, oh my Lord, my Rabb, what do you want from me? And then you do that. No matter how, what you think the consequences are, you do that. That is Islam. That is Islam. That is racist. So this is, these are conditions for doing commanding the Lord for me. And then the third one, وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْسَبْدِي These are, this is when it comes to commanding the good and forbidding the evil and becoming a patient on this. And so, um, this, this commanding the good and forbidding, this is a very, very important uh, part too. Because the, because the Quran says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَا عَنْ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ The Quran says, you are the best of nations. You are the best of nations. So we have a mission. We have a, a, a goal. We, we, have an, we have, if you want to use this word, and I said I don't like using this word, but I'm going to use it. If, you have, if there is an identity, then this is it. We are people who call, the, who call to the good, and we are people who burn people from the, from the evil. And the, and the greatest evil is the fire of hell. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, often we talk about commanding the good and forbidding the evil. We gotta command the good against alcohol. We gotta we, we gotta forbid the evil of you know all of these other things that we see in society. But Aisha said in a Sahih Hadith, she said if the first verses of the Quran, she said the first verses of the Quran that came down were the verses of paradise and hell. Paradise and hell. And if the first verses to come down were لا تشرب الخمر ولا تزنو, don't drink alcohol and don't do zina, don't do adultery, don't fornicate, then then they would have never left, then they would never have followed the Prophet ﷺ. This is Aisha, the mother of the believers, saying this. So the first thing we call to people is belief in the afterlife, and this is why the Quran says, "What ya ayyuhal mudaffir, boom fa'andir." Oh, you wrapped up in your garments, meaning the Prophet when he was shivering. Boom fa'andir, stand up, arise, and warn. Warn people, not laws, because that comes later, but warn people of the fire of hell. You know, this, you know, I'll finish with this. We should really be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first word in the Quran is what? Alhamd, gratitude. Just imagine that this is this religion is not based on fear. This religion is based on gratitude. This religion is a religion of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet said, Afala akuru abdin shakura. When they said to the Prophet of Allah, why do you stand at night so long until your feet swell, praying to Allah? Your, all your sins have been forgiven. And he said, shall I not be a grateful slave? So we see this religion is about gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us this. Allah has given us this beautiful gift. This beautiful gift of belief. How ungrateful to Allah would we be if we kept it to ourselves and didn't command people and forbid the evil, forbid the um, call people to the salvation, their salvation, and call people away from the fire of hell, and call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we really have to become a community, I'll repeat, of Iman first, and then Islam second. And Islam, Iman, Islam, re real Iman, Islam. Not cultural Iman, Islam. Not external when we're with our friends, we're very, very nice, but our home, with our mothers and our wives and our children, no, we're nothing. We're nothing. And then, and then, a community that calls people, warns people against the fire of hell. Our neighbors, have they heard the message or not? Have we warned them or not? And there are many, many ways, you know, there are, it's an important, this is, there's an important, there is an important discussion as to how you go about doing that, but that's for a, maybe a, another topic. But inshallah, if we bear these things in mind, then these are the real superheroes. Really, these are the real superheroes. I'm really, honestly, when we come to this, that, that all, this, all this political problem that we think we're having in the world you know, we're talking about Arab Spring and Syria and all of these things which are happening but do we really, really do anything which might change that? do we really? Allah said, no, there's a verse in the Quran which is very clear وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ 
Look at this. Allah has promised you if you believe and do good deeds. But these two conditions need to be there. لا في القرب. That He will give them khilafah in the earth. You know, we all talk about Izza and oh, well, Allah Ma'izan Islam and Muslimin in our every prayer, every tarawih. Allah Ma'izan Islam, but we have no Izza in our homes. So we, before we protest about the disrespect of the Prophet, we need to respect the Prophet in our lives. We are the first people that we do, that disrespect the Prophets, the Prophet of Allah. We need to respect him. We need to respect him. And then other people will come to us and they will run to Islam. They will beg us to teach them. This is what we need to we need to show people Islam, not to make people hear Islam. We need to show them. And I'll finish off with a story. Uh, you know, I had a few things, other things to say, but I'll finish off. I'll finish off with this story. A beautiful story that um, there was a, a, a man, a Polish, I think, convert, said he was traveling in Turkey and he got lost. He got lost and um, he ended up in a village. It was very dark. He was with his wife. And um, he was walking and, you know, he, he saw a person wrapped up, you know, walking through the village. And he went up to him and he goes, can you, can you guide me? Can you lead me on the way? I need a hotel. And the man said, come with me. So he, he was a bit afraid, you know, he didn't know his spot. So he, he went with him anyway. So this man, he took him to his home, and he got home, and um, they sat down, and the man fed him. He said, and this uh, Polish man said, made me feel very comfortable. And he said, after you know everything, after serving me, made me feel very comfortable. My wife too. He said, you stay here, and I'm going to the other room. He said, okay, you know, I'll sleep here for the night. You stay here for the night, I'll go to the other room. So he said he slept. In the morning he woke up, and now obviously he can see everything. And he said, I went out to the door. He said, I went out to the door. And he said, when I looked, there was no other room. There was no other room. He said, I looked, and I looked at a, under a tree. Him and his wife and his children were shivering under a blanket under the tree. Shivering. They'd been there the whole night. And he goes up to him and said, are you crazy? Are you crazy? He stands up and he says, no, I'm not crazy. I'm a Muslim. This is my religion. I'm not crazy. And he said, I looked at my wife and, she, and, her, and her, her, her tears were falling from her cheeks. She was crying, she was weeping. And he said, I became a Muslim. And this man now is setting up Islamic centers all across the world. All across the world. This Polish, this, I think he was Polish. I think he was Polish. He was setting up these centers all across the world. Imagine. This is what Islam can do. The Prophet وسلم, became a Muslim and then he showed people what Islam was. So before we show people Islam, we need to really seriously think whether we are people of the Quran or not. And if we're not, we need to go away and learn our religion, become Muslims, and then people of this country will run to us.